A good daily trainer needs to be able to handle just about anything. And I've done just about everything in this running shoe. I've chased elite half marathoners in Brooklyn. I took it for a serious run on mags in Boulder. And it's even done a few loops around Pre's trail in Eugene. This is Asics Nova Blast 3 after 100 miles. And it's my shoe of the year. Ten point one one miles, nine minutes, five seconds per mile, and one hundred and forty beats per minute on average today. Going for an easy run with strides in the Asics Nova Blast Three and getting it to the one hundred mile mark. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Asics for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. I will also disclose that I've been doing a lot of work with ASICs this year leading up to the World Championship in Eugene. So there is plenty of opportunity for bias in this review. So please feel free to take that into consideration when you're weighing the opinions that I give in this video. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the ASICs Nova Blast 3 after 100 miles. First, since this is my first video specifically on this shoe, let's go over some specs. This year we've got an additional millimeter of stack height compared to last year's Nova Blast 2. This year we've got 31 millimeters of stack height with the same eight millimeter drop, giving us 23 millimeters of FF Blast Plus midsole foam, a brand new foam for ASICs this year. And it is a fantastic improvement over the FF Blast that I already really enjoyed from last year. The FF Blast Plus, it is lighter, it is squishier, it is more resilient, so it springs back faster. It's basically everything that I loved about FF Blast just taken to another level. And in terms of weight savings that this new foam can provide, the Nova Blast 3 comes in at 8.5 nine ounces, which is significantly lighter than the 9.7 ounce shoe that we had last year. So because of this Blast Plus material, we're getting more cushion underfoot, more springiness, more squishiness, and it's coming in at a lighter weight as well. It just seems to defy the laws of physics. Up top, we still have an engineered mesh, which is super comfortable and very breathable on this shoe. There is a decent amount of padding as we get back here into the heel cup, a little bit more padding than I think that I personally need for a lot of my daily trainers. But for those of you that really want to make sure that this back of the heel cup matches in terms of plushness and comfort as with the rest of this midsole, you're going to be taken care of back here. The main improvement for the upper for me is in the tongue. The first two editions of the Nova Blast had more of a taller tongue that stuck out a little bit further on the foot, but this year they're going with the notch tongue so it sits a little bit flatter, gets out of the way, which is ultimately what I love for a shoe's tongue to do. Moving to the outsole, I don't think that there are actually any changes to what we're seeing in terms of the rubber powder that's in here. It looks very similar to what we've seen in Nova Blast 1 and 2. It's still maintaining that trampoline inspired design is what ASICS is calling this area here where the forefoot actually sticks out a little bit so that when you land on it, it compresses down and then wants to release back into its original position, giving you a little extra pop off from that forefoot as your foot rolls through the gate cycle. The only negative change that I've seen from last year to this year is that the price has gone up by another $10 to 140 bucks. Now with those specs aside, let's talk about how I've been using this shoe over the last hundred miles. I think that this shoe is an exemplary daily trainer. For me now, it kind of sets the standard for what a daily trainer should be. It can do it all. It's durable enough for all your easy runs. It's comfortable enough for your long runs, and it's still nimble enough for workouts as well. And I think that with the Nova Blast 3, it being 100% 
FF Blast Plus, you're getting even bouncier, even squishier of a sensation with the added benefit of somehow it's still remaining a stable shoe in the heel. Now, I know for a lot of you guys that didn't love Nova Blast 1, it was because it was almost too squishy. The Nova Blast 2, I think, really worked on stabilizing that heel while maintaining that squishy foam. The Nova Blast 3, furthers the improvements in that arena in a way that doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know how they can make a shoe even squishier than it was last year while also maintaining a stability in the heel and in the ankle so it doesn't feel like I'm gonna topple over as I'm running in this shoe. It's still definitely a neutral shoe. It's not a stability shoe by any means, but for me, it's surprising just how squishy they're able to make this shoe while maintaining that stability in that heel and ankle. And when it comes to the outsole, it can handle a variety of terrain. I've certainly done a lot of city miles in this shoe. I've done a lot of running on paved surfaces, but I was also taking it on dirt road miles. And while I was up in Eugene, one of the runs I did was up to Pree's Rock. And on the way back down from that hill, there was a very steep and very wet, loose gravel section that we ran through in a park. And I was very concerned with how wet and kind of slippery everything was, that the traction wasn't gonna be all that great, but me and several other people who were also running in the Nova Blast 3 on that day didn't have any problems at all bombing down the hill. And so it's a surprisingly capable shoe, even on surfaces that aren't so paved and aren't so flat. In terms of fit, it is true to size. For me, I went with my usual size nine that I go with all my running shoes, including ASIC shoes. Now, I've talked to a couple of people who have run in the shoe that have wanted to maybe size down a little bit, but for me, my regular size nine is the right size. To me, it fits very similarly to the Nova Blast 2, so if you have experience in the Nova Blast 2 or even the Nova Blast 1, my usual size has been what I've been going with and I've been very happy with it. So now let's talk about the wear and tear after the 100 miles in this shoe. I'd say that the foam still feels great. There is quite a bit of visual creasing that's happening along the sides of the shoe, both on the lateral and on the medial sides toward the arch of the foot. So it is a foam that at least is going to show its age, but I still feel like it's very bouncy, still feels very lightweight and nimble every time that I put it on. And when I do lace them up, I still get excited when I am going to wear the shoe. The one area of wear that I'll notice when it comes to the foam is that I feel like perhaps this trampoline inspired area right in the forefoot isn't quite as pronounced as it was when it was straight out of the box. I don't know if part of that is me being kind of accustomed to the way that the FF Blast Plus is gonna feel in the shoe anymore, but I do think that there is a little bit of the foam kind of settling in over the past 100 miles. But today I felt like it was really lovely to get out onto the paved surfaces for a 10 mile easy run. So the foam here still has so much life left in it. Now there is some damage that I'm starting to see on the foam in this area, kind of like to the sides of where this little trampoline area is. Uh, you could tell that when the shoe is compressing in that forefoot, some of that foam is scraping along the ground. And I'm wondering if that would have happened either when I was up on mags, where I was on dirt roads, or perhaps when I was on Priest Trail or coming down from Pree's Rock when I was in the gravel. So either the wood chips, the gravel, or maybe the dirt road. I think that's where a lot of that damage is happening. So depending on what kind of surfaces you run in, you may or may not encounter the same kind of scuffing and chew marks that are in the foam on this shoe. I'm also seeing a little bit of kind of scraping of the color on this outer side of this heel area for me where a little bit of the color is rubbing off. So I'm seeing a little bit of wear right there. But other than that, the foam is well protected with the amount of rubber that's here, even though it's not a full rubber coverage outsole. Now, in terms of that rubber, I think it's holding up really well. There was some very delicate kind of like uh, etchings into the face of all the rubber surfaces on the Nova Blast 3. I think that's maybe something that can be revisited for version four. Because those etchings were so faint and delicate, they have all worn down relatively quickly. And especially in the pads of the foot where I'm seeing uh, the most wear on this shoe. It seems like there's excessive wear happening in the rubber, but at the same 
time, this is A6 rubber we're talking about. It's usually very durable. And in terms of these rubber outsole sections, there is still plenty of thickness to the rubber here. So I'm not worried about the ability of this rubber outsole to provide traction and protection of the midsole foam. So now that I've covered how the shoe is held up over the miles, let's talk about why I think it's the shoe of the year. And simply put, it's because I love running in this shoe. I look forward to it and get excited every time I lace these shoes up and get ready to go for a run. It's comfortable for long distances and it's capable at quick paces. You can take it for just about any type of run. So it's an extremely versatile shoe, but I also think it's a really universal shoe as well. So many different types of runners are going to be able to enjoy this shoe. Whether you've got a dozen shoes already in your closet, you're going to find a space for this shoe and really enjoy it. Or if you're looking to buy one and only one shoe to take you from the first day of your training plan all the way through the finish line of your next big race, this is going to be a shoe that you're going to really enjoy. This is a shoe that's going to stand out for me long after the year is done, and that's why the Asics Novo Blast 3 is my shoe of the year. If you have any other questions, please feel free to put them in the comments down below, or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully, you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?